this is a new M1 iPad Air for 2022 and before giving you a full review of it, I wanted to share with you how I have it set up, some of my favourite apps and how I use it day to day to get work done. Just to kick things off though, let me explain the actual setup. This is the 256GB version in the wonderful purple colourway and I generally only ever use this with one of Apple's smart folio cases. Call me crazy but I don't actually like using a keyboard that much on the iPad so I pretty much always opt for one of those cases. And I always have the Apple Pencil Generation 2 with me, regardless of where I am, and I usually just snap that to the side. I do wish there was a more secure location to put it on those cases, like a pen loop or something, but I haven't lost a pencil yet, so I guess it's been good enough. And I still think the pencil trumps the keyboard, or at least that's just for me. Okay, so when you open the iPad, you're greeted with my home screen, which is featuring the new wallpaper pack we've just finished over at Kuroku. This is called the Tayo pack, and I couldn't be more happy with how it came out. We made a bunch of colorways that look great on the iPad, desktop, and mobile, so I'll throw a link in the description if you want to check them out. The first thing I want to point you towards is this widget I have on the home screen. This little thing lets me push the iPad into different focus modes depending on what I'm planning to get done. Right now, we're on the general home screen Screen, which is what I use for everyday tasks, but if I know I'm going to be doing a huge amount of work, then I can just jump into the productivity mode, which loads up all of my work-based apps, or if I'm looking to play some games, then I can jump over there, which loads up all of the games I'm currently playing. This separates my iPad into three kind of distinct modes, and it allows me to focus better while I'm using it. So stick around and I'll explain how all three of those work. And I do have a video explaining how I got all of that set up with focus modes and that little widget. So I'll link it below if you wanna check it out. Let's start with the dock because that's where I keep the apps I switch to most. And I'm not going to overly explain these because I'm sure all of you are aware of what most of these apps are and what they do. But I did want to talk about Microsoft To Do, which is one of my absolute go-to apps. I start every day by opening this app and writing in everything I need to get sorted for that day. And I really just simply tick things off as I go. If I don't get things quite sorted that day, I add a due date of tomorrow and then they become the first tasks of the next day. I know there's a million other to-do list apps that are more complicated and have loads more features but for me, Microsoft To Do has just been the one. Otherwise, these docked apps are there for easy and constant access, and a lot of times I'll throw them into slide over so I can just get to them whenever I need to. So that's the dock, but let's talk about my general use page. I'm going to flick through the more obvious apps again because you don't need me to explain what Gmail and YouTube are, but let's look more closely at the others. First of note is uh, Good Notes 5. This is my go-to note taker of choice at the moment and it actually has been for quite a long time now. I don't think there's any other note taking app out there that does it all like Good Notes does unless you pay for a subscription service. Looking at you, Notability. I'm actually in the process of taking another look at note-taking apps for 2022 because I think the landscape has changed a little since I looked last year. So if that's something you'd like to see, then stay tuned. It's very much on my to-do list. I also have Google Docs, which has loads of my old scripts and half ideas that are laying around, which I'm in the process of moving over to Notion. Speaking of Notion, this is pretty much where I do all of my channel's organization. And I'm also super happy to tell you that they're sponsoring today's video, which is awesome because I was going to talk about this app a lot anyway. Notion is an organizational app that allows you to customize it to your needs so you can stay on top of everything you're working on. And I've been using it now for about six months. My main use case for Notion is to completely manage this YouTube channel. Seriously, I keep everything in here. All my video ideas, my scripts, checklists for freelance work, keeping track of my goals, and even equipment I'm planning on getting. Recently, I've been using it to track short form content ideas for Instagram and TikTok. I've been using the board template to do this, and I've got an ideas panel, a filmed panel, and an uploaded one, and I can either click into those to get more details or simply drag them to different columns while I'm working on them. Personally, I use Notion Solo, but it works incredibly well if you're working as a team, allowing you to assign people to tasks, share calendars, and collaborate directly on anything and everything Thing you've got going on. So that's Notion. I think it's well worth checking out if you're a content creator of any sorts 
if you're looking for a central way to organize yourself or your team. If you do want to check it out, there's a link in the description. And of course, a big thanks goes out to the folks over at Notion for sponsoring this video. Moving on from there are my main photo editors for iPad. Lightroom and Affinity Photo. And I know, I know, I've talked about Lightroom a lot on this channel and I've made it no secret that it's one of my all time favorite apps to use on iPad, but it's true and it still is. Lightroom for photo editing on the iPad for a content creator like myself is a match made in heaven. I edit all of my Instagram and personal photography here and it's truly a joy to use. Interacting with photos on a touch interface just feels right and I really love the cloud backup that Lightroom offers. It means whenever I import my photos they follow me around so I can edit on my PC, Mac, iPhone or iPad regardless of where I initially imported them from. I still don't think it's quite the right app if you've got hundreds of photos or if you're editing like vast, vast quantities. But for someone like me who often deals with really small shoots for things like Instagram, it's a really perfect app. Affinity Photo is next to that and I'm actually quite new to it and I really wished I'd checked it out earlier. I've been pretty frustrated with the Photoshop app for iPad for quite a long time because it's missing so many features and honestly, it's just not a very great experience. And Affinity Photo just has absolutely everything the Photoshop app doesn't have. You can even open and export Photoshop files in here so you could go back to working on them on the desktop if you wanted to. As mentioned, I'm only just getting used to it, but yeah, if you're looking for that Photoshop experience on iPad, it's Affinity Photo. At least it is for now. Under there are some more general apps. Pinterest is a bit of an endless scroller for me. I collect a huge amount of ideas and art and kind of aesthetic choices on here. Even with just a quick scroll, you can probably tell why this channel looks and feels like it does. I also use this a lot for general graphic design too, so I can get an idea of how things should look when I'm trying to decide on layouts or something like that. The last big app on this screen is Procreate and this along with Lightroom and a few others like LumaFusion and things like that really are some of the best apps on iPad by a hugely long shot. Procreate is an Apple Pencil first art and design app and honestly it's just such a wonderful place to work in. Although it possibly appeals to artists the most, Procreate is actually a great place to design things. We use it extensively at Kuroku, which is a small brand I run with my good friend. We sketch and design things and create mock-ups that eventually turn into real life products. You've probably heard enough good things about Procreate, so I'm not gonna chew your ear off about it, but if you're into any form of digital art or design, then I would consider this one an absolute essential. So there's my first page. It's kind of a mix of everything I normally do on the iPad and all the apps that I use mostly. But moving on, we have the second home screen, which is what I use when I need to get stuff done without being distracted. And this is my productivity page. And it's another simple tap away using the shortcuts widget. Not only does hitting that jump me over to this page, but it silences all unnecessary notifications too. First up, you'll notice how the widgets change. These are all bigger widgets that I can use at, at a glance. There's a larger calendar so I can see what's going on. A files widget, which is a really nice way of jumping into your latest files that you've been working on. And finally, I have a Notion widget, which lets me jump into my favorite pages within Notion, which again is just really useful. The rest of the apps on this page are the ones I'm always going to when I'm working and I'm still kind of split between a few ecosystems thanks to working freelance and fitting in with my client workflow so that's why I have Google Calendar along with OneDrive and Google Drive. Otherwise this pretty much sums up the working or productivity page of my iPad. Okay, so my final screen is my iPad gaming setup. Again, a simple tap of the shortcuts widget on gaming brings me over to this panel and it brings up everything I'm currently playing or games that I'd like to revisit. And first off, I have to admit, I haven't made a huge amount of time for gaming on here recently since I picked up uh, Ghost of Tsushima on PS5 and then Elden Ring came out. So I'm already a busy gamer outside of here, but I still do think the iPad is a great place to play games. In a similar fashion to my productivity page, this screen screen silences most notifications when I jump into it and allows me to play kind of hassle free. As for games I've currently been playing, I've been checking out the Final Fantasy VII First Soldier because a podcast I listen to has been doing nothing but raving about it, so I'm giving it my best shot at the moment. There were some other games like Divinity Original Sin 2 which I really wanted to get stuck into, but as I mentioned, I'm busy enough with games outside of iPad at the moment. As a note, the previous gen iPad Air from 2020 handled these games really well, so this new one with the M1 chip just absolutely blazes through them 
and also it gets a lot less hot while you're playing, which is kind of like a nice little bonus. I've also been trying my best to get the Xbox game streaming to work well, but as of now, I still can't get a decent result from it, which is such a shame, it just lags all over the place. I'd love to jump on here to do some quick races on Forza 5 or to carry on with games like Death Store, but for me at least, and maybe it's my internet speed, it's still not quite there. So that rounds up the gaming screen and my final widget shortcut is simply called home and it brings me back to that general home screen and re-enables all of my notifications. So I usually tap this when I'm done with work for the day or if I just finish something I've been working on. You may have also spotted I have another little shortcut here which is my secret productivity source. This shortcut is just called Lo-Fi and by tapping this it loads up the Lo-Fi girl on YouTube and then jumps me directly back to my home screen so I've got some background music to work with. It's a really simple shortcut but I'll share it in the description if you want to grab a copy of it. So that just about sums up my current setup for the new iPad Air and how I've been using iPads in general for the last six months or so. As ever, I'm open to learning about new apps, so if you think there's some I should check out, then let me know in the comments below. Oh, and if you picked up a new iPad Air, then let me know which colour you went for. And Pocky and I will see you all in the next one.